everybody. Welcome to KQED. Thank you for being here. Awesome. My name is Sarah Rose Leonard, and I'm a live events producer here at KQED Live. KQED Live is our new multi-platform event series. You can check out our full line of programming at kqed.org backslash live. We produce screenings, talks, performances like this one, food events, and game nights, and much more. So we want to thank our season sponsors for um, supporting KQED Live. That would be the Asian Art Museum, Berkeley Rep, Comcast Business, and San Francisco Symphony. Yay, thank you so much to our sponsors. They make what we do here possible. Um, so your host this evening is Erica Cruz Guevara. I know, I know, right? Um, some of you may know her as the host of the Bay podcast. Before becoming host, she was a show's producer, and her work in that capacity includes a three-part reported series on policing in Vallejo, which won a 2020 Excellence in Journalism Award from the Society of Professional Journalists. Yes, give it up for Erica. And she has worked as a breaking news reporter at Oregon Public Broadcasting, helped produce the Code Switch podcast, and was KQD's inaugural Raul Ramirez um, Diversity Fund intern. She's also, right, she's also an alumna of NPR's Next Generation radio program. So without further ado, please welcome Erica to the stage, and thank you for being here. Hello. Hello, hello. Most Filipino way, uncle way to enter a party. <laughs> Welcome, all of you, to Philippinex Arts Night here at KQED. Um, I want you all to just sort of look around a little bit because this is one of KQED Live's most sold out shows in this space ever. And that's right. And I feel like that's no accident because Filipino Americans show up. We show out, right? <laughs> Tama, diba? What you are going to see tonight is a showcase of Filipinx American art and also history. And you might have also noticed our all Pinay lineup. So let me hear you. That's right. Give it up for the Pinays who made this show happen tonight. That's right. Tonight is also a celebration of the past, present, and future of Filipino American history and art, and a celebration also of the diversity of Filipinos here in the Bay Area. It's also a showcase of some of the amazing work coming out of Balai Creative. <laughs> Yee! <laughs> uh, that is an arts incubator based right here in San Francisco in the historic Filipino Heritage District and our partner in tonight's show. And if it's okay, I'd love to talk about Balai Creative for a minute because this show would not have happened without them. And to do this, I want to introduce someone to you. Uh, I want to introduce Nicole Mashali. Nicole is the program manager for Balai Creative. She is a third generation San Franciscan with a long family history of activism and community work in the Filipino American arts and culture scene. And let's play a little Filipino American history drinking game real quick. If you know, yeah, that's what we're doing. If you know any of these historic names or locations in Nicole's family lineage, sip your drink. Her father, Canuto Salaver, was a manong of the historic International Hotel in the 1940s. He was also an original co-founder of the famed Bataan restaurant and pool parlor in San Francisco's Manila town. Her grandmother, Estrella Salaver, led the San Francisco-based Philippine American Cultural Foundation, which promoted social and cultural awareness in the community through programs and performances in the 1960s. Her uncle was also among those arrested for protesting during the famous student-led student strikes for ethnic studies and relevant education at San Francisco State in 1969 a fight that I and so many others have benefited from in the generation since. Nicole, Nicole's own work 
has spanned over 20 years in events, creative and the, and the theater realm from solo performance, new media production, filmmaking, screenplay writing, and event production. Her extensive production and events background include an experimental pop-up exhibit for Ariana Grande's Sweetener album in New York City, and the Capua Cares comedy music event in San Francisco with Phil Am legends Rex Navarrete and AJ Raphael. She believes that elevating the culture and helping heal generational trauma through art is part of her legacy. To ground us in some history and more about Balai Creative, please welcome to the stage, Nicole Mashali. Thank you. Hey, everyone. What's up? So, Nicole, your family history, I feel like, is a perfect example of the legacy of Filipino Americans in San Francisco, in the Bay Area, uh, and also an influence that persists today in your work at Balai Creative. For those who don't know, can you tell us what is Balai Creative and why does it exist? Yes, so for those that don't know, we are a studio, art studio in San Francisco Soma District. We are a streaming hub and we give grants to Philippine X artists. So tonight we're gonna see some of those grantees and we're all about supporting and pushing Philippine and Philippine X arts forward and just supporting artists however we can. Resources, money, space. It's all about the love for artists. Right, and Philippine X artists in particular. I feel like a common thread that we're gonna see tonight is history. And I wanna ask you about that. What role do you think Philippine X history and this sort of rootedness plays in Philippine X American art and the art that we're gonna see tonight? Well, I like that you use the word rooted because I always envision, you know, Filipinos being like redwood trees. For those that don't know, redwood trees, when they grow, they just not only grow up, but they grow down and they connect their roots to each other so that they're stronger together. And so I feel as Filipino Americans, we get to embrace and really dig deeper into our roots and understand our history of why we came here as a people and the importance of our immigration stories here in America. Like in the 1920s, like you said, my grandfather was a monong in the I Hotel and he not only owned the first pool hall and restaurant in the Manila town, but he was also a drummer for a big band called Hawaiian Serenaders. Because, you know, Filipinos, we had to come off as like Hawaiian, right, to be safe for the white folks. <laughs> and so back then, art was our social scene, a lot like how it is now, right? Like now we have clubs and DJs, but back then they had something called taxi dance halls. Because the Monong generation, for those that don't know, it was all bachelors. 90% of them were bachelors in the 1920s that came here to work in the fields, in the canneries, or as bellhops. And they weren't allowed to bring their wives and their children. And do you know why that was? Racism. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was very, it's rooted in racism. And so they didn't want the Filipinos to procreate, basically. Um, they just wanted them to be hard workers and keep their head down. So the Monongs had something called taxi dance halls where they would mingle with each other, you know, have drinks and dance with women. It was the only way for them to interact with women. And my grandfather was a drummer for those taxi dance halls. And so I think it's important to know this because this is how the art started in the Filipino American community here in the Bay Area. And then it started to blossom when the nurses came, right? The second wave of immigration. In 1948, there were only 7,000 nurses in America, and then they opened it up to the Filipinas, and then it blossomed to 57,000 nurses because there was a shortage. And so those 57,000 Filipinas that came to California and the Bay Area, of course, gave way to children, to community, to all sorts of Filipinos in Hayward and Fremont and Daly City and Vallejo, right? And so now we have Filipinos all over the Bay. And because of that, we had our organizations popping up. 
And I want to name a few of them because I think it's really important for those that don't know. Like in the 1970s, we had Manila Heritage Foundation in the International Hotel. In 1972, we had Kearney Street Workshop. In 1985, we have Cool Arts, Manang Alleluia. 1989, Biddlestiff Studio, the only Filipino-American theater in the nation. And of course, in the 1990s, I would be remiss if I did not mention the invisible scratch pickles. <laughs> because they were pioneers in hip hop. Exactly. And I think that just proves that Filipino Americans not only bring so much art and heart <laughs> to our culture here in America, but we are pioneers in the art scene. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk to that. Let's talk to that. And Ballet Creative is part of that legacy uh, and that growing legacy today. Uh, Nicole, thank you so much for sharing that history and for that grounding. Are y'all ready to get this party started? It's a good show, y'all. It is a good show. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, opening our show tonight is Nick Bo, an Oakland-based singer, songwriter, and an indie award-winning artist. And when I say we're celebrating the diversity of the Philippine American experience tonight, here's what I mean. Nick Bo is a third culture kid, that is how she identifies. Before moving to the Bay Area, Nick Bo grew up in Morocco, Canada, Malawi, and Kazakhstan. This identity is a huge influence in her unique sound, which you will get to hear tonight. Nikbo has several previous lives, including as a human biology major, choir kid, spoken word poet, and a mental health case manager. Born Nicole Narieta Francisco Bonsol, Nikbo inherited her grandmother's green thumb and big forehead. And for those who want to know, she is a Capricorn rising, Taurus moon, Sagittarius, with her son in the 12th house. <laughs> her work has appeared in Hella Pinai Magazine, Smithsonian Magazine, and now KQED Live. I want to hear you all give it up for our first performer of the night, Nick Bo. Burning books along the shelf, getting used to all the noises. Quiet morning to myself. I had a good time.
Thank you all so much. I'm so excited to be here at KQED Live. KQED, like, I listened to that on the radio, and like, here we are. I love KQED. I love, oh, when I used to commute in the mornings, Science Friday, <laughs> the California Report. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Uh, does anyone else identify as a nerd? Yeah, yeah, I got some hands up. Cool, cool. Everyone else who doesn't have their hands up, you might not self-identify, but you are at a KQED show, so <laughs> let's, just, let's just call each other kin. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm a nerd. Uh, I have a big forehead, and I wrote a song about that. <laughs> um, as a Balai creative grantee, I road tripped to Canada, Calgary, Alberta this summer, which is where my, um, where my half of my family immigrated to. Um, and I interviewed my family to write this new EP that um, Balai Creative is funding. And one of the questions that I asked them was, um, what are the traits that you see passed down through the generations? I asked my elders that. And what I was hoping to do was learn not just more about my family, but more about my ancestors. Um, if, if I noticed some patterns or commonalities in, that, in the answers they gave, maybe we could extrapolate that back to the ancestors um, whose names we don't know, um, whose we don't have any records of. Um, so I asked them that question. and. Funnily enough, my favorite answer that came out from the question, what traits have you noticed passed down through the generations is uh, your grandmother's big forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, this is my grandmother Francisca Tabaranza's forehead. This is my mother's forehead. The, my, several of my cousins have this forehead. My 17-year-old niece, it is a persistent gene. Um, and hearing this answer and just being in this context of wanting to know my family better, it reminded me of uh, a quote that I read in a book called Women Who Run With the Wolves um, by Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes. Um, and the quote is about um, resisting the ways that we are conditioned to hate our bodies, um, whether it's our size, our height, our, the color of our skin, the texture of our skin. Um, resist that by embracing the ancestors who handed that uh, trait down to you. Um, I'm going to read a quote. If we are taught to hate our own bodies, how can we love our mother's body that has the same configuration as ours? Our grandparents' body, the bodies of our children, to attack a person's body destroys their rightful pride of affiliation with their own people. In essence, the attack on our bodies is a far-reaching attack on the ones who have gone before us, as well as the ones who will come after. This is big for him. Two 
mother's mother palms to ice deep breath cradle the dome of my big forehead this round face a gift given to me by my mother's mother palms to Thank you so much. It is a real honor to be here tonight sharing the stage with these other amazing artists, these culture creators and prominent voices in the Philippinex community here in the Bay and beyond. Um, I want to I wanna express deep gratitude to Balai Creative for selecting me as one of their grantees this year. The, the support and the validation that they've provided and the the community that they've created with the, the cohort of artists this year um, has been really life affirming and sustaining and generative. Um, so let's just give it up for them one more time for organizing tonight. Thank you. I am, um, you all are so wonderful. Uh, I have one more song for you. It <laughs> Um, I can stop now. <laughs> I have one more song for you. I wrote this song deep in 2020. Um, during that, it was like September. It was like the worst month of the year. There was, you know, we're still in pandemic isolation. There was that day that the sky was red because of fire season. Um, you know, all the uprisings against police brutality were happening here in this country and then back home in the Philippines, there was like little people working for liberation. It felt like they were getting bad news every week. Um, and I had recently been uh, asked to leave my apartment during a pandemic, uh, but luckily landed in a place with a garden. And every morning I would go out into the garden and um, tend to the plants and um, learn, I was learning how to like leave offerings for my ancestors and ask them to protect us, uh, to protect the people in my community, my friends, my family, the people doing the good work of taking care of us, um, people working for liberation, the earth. Um, that was a way that I would tend to my nervous system in the mornings. Um, so yeah, this, this song is a protection spell. And everyone's, it's cut, everyone's seated, but if you feel like, you know, the rhythm or the bass makes you want to move, please move. If you want to snap or clap, if you want to sing along. You, if you don't know the words, you can sing whatever. I, it's a, I want this to be a free experience being free in this song. Um, yeah, this is We Need Each Other. Every morning in the garden, I pray sweetly for our protection. Yeah, I see you bopping.
I'm Nick Bo. You can find me on Instagram at Nick Bo Music or nickbomusic.com. Let's connect. Thank you. Give it up. Thank you, Nick Bo. Give it up for Nick Bo, y'all. That was amazing. That was beautiful. That was a beautiful tribute to our ancestors, that last song, I felt like she was like calling them. I was like, oh snap, they're on their way. They're here, they're here, y'all. The ancestors are here. Our next performer is someone who I think pays tribute to our ancestors in another beautiful way through poetry and through writing. Uh, Gail Roma Santa, she is a writer, a community organizer, and an artist whose work focuses on the Filipino American experience. Some of you may have read her book, Journey for Justice, The Life of Larry Itliong, which she co-wrote with the late and great historian, Dr. Don Mabalon, may she rest in peace. Gail is a former artistic director of San Francisco's iconic Bindle Stiff Studio, the only theater space in the US devoted to Filipino American storytelling. She's executive director of the Filipino American Development Foundation, and an artist in residence at Brava for Women in the Arts, where she is currently writing Larry the Musical about the life, that's right, about the life of Larry Itliong, which recently received a National Endowment for the Arts Grant Award. Yes. She is also the co-founder of Kappa Psi Epsilon. Any Kappas in the house? I know y'all are at home, I know. <laughs> She's also founder of Bridge and Delta Publishing, a publishing house dedicated to immigrant stories that are American at their core. Here today to root us back in some Filipino American history and poetry, Gail Romasanta. Oh man, hi everybody. You guys have 
having a good time? Yeah. All right, we're gonna talk about history now. <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really honored to be here. And when I was asked to be part of this beautiful multi-generational uh, list of women who were performing who are also Filipino American, I was really honored. And I thought of each and every woman was at a different stage in their life. And whenever you are in a stage of life, you create art that is very specific to that stage in your life. And for women, that means a lot because we have so much responsibility. And don't get me wrong, men also have their own responsibility and their circles of influence, but women definitely, especially in the Filipino American culture, are the glues of our community. They are making babies. They are in charge of food. They are in charge of, uh, you know, also having a job. They are in charge of coordination. They're in charge of being the buffer for outside environments. And they're also in charge of coordinating and leading our communities. Um, if you look into our community, you will look at so many women leaders um, currently. And so when there are so many things that women do, we cannot produce nor create the art that we need to, right? Everybody needs art for sanity. So for any woman out there and even men and every, you know, everyone, if you need to create art, you absolutely need to do it. It is part of mental health, it is part of you, it is part of our communities, and so you must do it. And so I'm happy to be here. Um, and I decided to read actually a poem that I wrote when I was 21, and that was about 25 years ago. Um, and I wanted to honor that young woman and where she was at the time. This poem is actually in response to learning that the military, specifically the Marine Corps and the Navy, called Filipina women little brown F machines. That is actually normalized. And that's what we were called. And so when I was 21, I thought of what happens to women, specifically Panay's because the Philippines is so absolutely logistically necessary for any war. And so our women are always comforting everybody and everything. And what happens to us, and especially what happens to us under a white gaze, under a white male gaze. And this also isn't just about Filipino American women, but also Asian American women. In the media, we're always, the prostitute with a heart of gold. And things are changing now, which are wonderful. And so this is what I was feeling when I was 21, but I feel like it may be relevant. And I use the word mango in here, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it was necessary at the time. Dahil <sighs> sayo, because of you. I think of white men. And having one someday, I don't believe I've ever had one. Though they have had some of me to have had being different from to want, want. Maybe you could have a sample of this song. Dahil sayo hanggang mamatay. Because of you. I would die. A taste of this flavor, perhaps? Tilapia, soy sauce, banana chile, manga, ube, wrapped together, deep fried, dripping with hidden suggestion. If I am good to you and do everything you want, need, could ever ask for being an Asian woman, would you do the same? We're equal a concept overshadowed by being your little brown brother's sister. Never mind that those Marine Corps and Navy boys call me an LBFM, a little brown effing machine. Maybe he would tell all his friends about it so they could have me too if they haven't already. Take turns. No, no, 
put your money away. Maybe they would never go back, seduced and lured by mine and my 200 or so tongues. Maybe they would fall in love. Couldn't they? And manifest this destiny. Dahil sayo, na iskong mabuhay. Because of you, I want to live. Because have and want are two different words. I am grateful as a young person, people opened the door to me with that poem, which opened the door to theater and music. And what I'm gonna show you next is actually something that I've been working on the last three years. And this actually, this piece was written probably in the last six months, seven months, that in a very, very specific stage in my life, right? I have four children um, and I collaborate a lot. And actually this piece was written with writer Kevin Kamiya and who's writing Larry the Musical, Larry the Musical with me. And we've been looking through a lot of photographs and, and, um, and looking at Larry Itliang's life, who was a labor leader, who was in protests and leading um, Filipino-American protests for farm workers' rights from the 20s up to the 1965. Um, Filipinos started the Delano Grape Strike of 1965 and asked Cesar Chavez to join with them. And so it was within that union that the UFW was born, the United Farm Workers. And so this picture right here actually happened in January 1930. And when I looked at this picture, I always thought it was an interesting picture. So this is actually in nine, January 1930, the Filipino Federation of America building was bombed by white supremacists. And so the Filipinos that you see here in their best clothes, they're smiling. And I thought when I was younger, I thought, oh man, Filipinos trying to be nice again? Why are you smiling in front of this picture? Aren't you mad? Are we being docile? But it wasn't until writing Larry the Musical did I finally realize they are not smiling because they're being docile. They're giving a big middle finger to everybody to ever sees this photo years on. They're saying, you can try to kill us, and we are going to come here dressed in our best with our children, and we are going to live, and we're going to thrive. And that is exactly what they did. And so it's researching all of this information did I find out also that anti-Filipino riots like this, where our buildings were getting bombed, actually occurred regularly um, from the 1920s, even happened in the 1970s. Um, and so Filipinos will be, would be indiscriminately bombed or there would be a riot. There's a famous one called Watsonville Riot. Many of you might have known about that. Over 500 white men came to Watsonville and actually indiscriminately started started beating and hurting and harming Filipinos. One person was killed, Fermin Tibera. Um, and this, you know, the first anti-Filipino riot was in Wapato, Washington in 1927. And it happened, right? There's like drive-by bombings on the Campo, um, fire bombings. There's drive-by shootings while, you know, Filipinos are working. So this kind of everyday violence, it was absolutely known within the community that it was actually a fun pastime for white people to go into the community and just beat us up. And so what happens to your community and what happens to women who have to carry this brunt and this burden? And so what you're gonna see is a song called Watsonville um, that is part of Larry the Musical and it's the character, her name is Raina and she has seen everything that's happened to Watsonville and she's coming now to Stockton after this 
building was burned, and she's letting them know what needs to happen in the Filipino community. It may not be pretty, but this is what needs to happen. And I just want to give a shout out because I know everyone's watching. I want to thank you to Kevin Kamia, the writer that I'm working with also, but then also our director that you're going to see um, who directed this beautiful piece, uh, Billy Bustamante, our director of photography, Chris Sotelo, and the musical team of uh, Brian Pangalinan and Sean Kana, the beautiful music that you hear that's surrounding this poem and the lyrics um, was that musical team. So I hope you enjoy and I hope that you learned a little bit of history today and that we must all create art no matter where we are in our different phases and that this history, you can't escape it. It absolutely colors the art. Once you've been politicized, you can never run away. And once you've been politicized to women and also war and what happens to Penais because we're at the center of war, we're logistically at the center of every strategic war that happens on the planet. It is almost our duty to talk about it. And so I hope you all take that away and after you see this piece and thank you so much and thank you KQBD and Bailai Creative and all the beautiful women who are on this stage with me tonight. Thank you. I came from Watsonville, escaped with my life. Vermin was shot in a closet and we fought through the night. They chased us in their trucks, beat us and tricked us. Their white hands clenched in fists. And you can hear them scream.
give it up for Gail Roma Santa one more time, y'all. How cool is that? It took so much work for uh, Larry Itliong and Philip De Dela Cruz to get the recognition they deserve for their work and their contributions to Filipino American history. And what an amazing way to honor his legacy. Um, Larry the Musical, by the way, premieres October 2023 at the Brava Theater in San Francisco. So check out LarryTheMusical.com for more. Our next performer also has some amazing stuff on the horizon. Wida is a singer, songwriter, and producer, and performer. She's also an activist and a diversity, equity, and inclusion programming consultant from San Francisco. Her music blends elements from jazz, neo-soul, and pop. Wida's songs are personal yet universal, queries into identity, belonging, and self-realization through the lens of mixed cultural experiences that shaped her right here in the Bay Area. Wida studied at the Clive Davis Institute for Recorded Music at NYU Tisch, alongside artists like Maggie Rogers, Topaz Jones, and Fletcher, penning tracks for major publishers and labels before completing a degree in sociology at UC Berkeley. She began releasing her own music and videos as an independent recording artist and creative director in 2020 as a way to connect and celebrate her heritage. Since her first release in 2020, Wida's songs have been featured in Nylon Manila Magazine, MTV's Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and Jersey Shore. <laughs> Overseas, <laughs> for Jersey Shore, y'all, Okay, all right, that's the crowd tonight. Um, she's also been featured overseas on Irish national radio stations and locally on CMC, KQED, KRML, and community events and festivals for BART and CAMFest. That's right. Wida's debut EP, Come Rain, Come Shine, is funded in part by Balai Creative's grant program and will deliver four new songs in early 2023, some of which you will get to hear tonight. Please welcome to the stage, Wida. have these things in, so I don't know if I'm just talking to myself or... Cool. Thank you for being here. My name is Wida. Um, oh, I see some familiar faces in the crowd. I know some of you got masks on, so it's like half anonymity and like half, I know you. But I heard some whoops back there when uh, Bart was said. <laughs> so I know you're all from the Bay. We all love Bart. So yeah, we're gonna play a couple songs for you that I wrote during the pandemic. Um, this first one is actually one of the first songs I wrote um, in the pandemic, and it's called Coffee, Coffee Ride With You. And um, I think now that we've returned to business as usual, back to normal, post-COVID, like, ish, you know, I think it's all the more important to remember to slow down and take your time and like feel your way through things. Um, and that's especially important for me. And so I wanted to start with this song and that intention to just melt into the present, whatever else is on your mind that you got some stuff to do later or you should be doing that right now, you don't have to be. Um, so enjoy. <laughs> I'll 
Give it up for my band. <laughs> we got Josh Ickban on the guitar and Brandon Farmer on the drums. And I'm so grateful for them. Thank you guys for doing this with me. You know how anxious I get on stage. Okay. <laughs> so this next song uh, we're gonna play for you is called Nice to Meet You. Um, chronologically, it came right after coffee. I moved uh, back to San Francisco where I grew up. I was uh, in the Portola district at my parents' house, and um, it was just a new chapter. I'd never really spent that much time with my parents since becoming an adult, you know what I mean? So uh, it was definitely kind of reckoning with who am I in this place that I always thought I knew myself, and kind of reinventing myself and reintroducing myself and thinking about what I've learned to become the person I am and what my parents have taught me. And so this song is really about deciding for yourself who you are, who you wanna be, reintroducing yourself unapologetically. And it's really for anybody who's ever felt out of step, out of place, um, if you ever walked into a room and no one else looked like you there, if you didn't feel welcome, this song's for you. It's called Nice to Meet You. If I have a way with words, 
Why's it hard to hear mine? A cool's in the cards and the lights turn to stars. Have a one right down the seaside. The one that don't belong. But sometimes I like it. I'm a jade in a world full of pearls. I'm a girl tired of being different. So I braid my hair along. Paint my wing, wing and star. Chin up everywhere I go. I don't do it for the show. I say my piece, real loud. Make myself real proud. See them tipping their shit over. Make them smile and say hello, lie. Nice to meet ya. Introduce ya to the real me. If that ain't what you want from me, you should know when I stop Break the wheel, pay attention to the way I feel. Breathe it out, breathe it in, feel the sun and the wind on my skin. Let it heal. Mama said to seize the day, so I cop a damn life away. I don't care if you stare for your shave of your head. There's a game we ain't gonna play, so I said, Nice to meet ya, introduce ya to the real me. If they don't want you home, Feel free, say fuck the negativity. You know, you know, you know. Nice to meet you, introduce you to the real me. If they don't want you all from me, you should go nice out here. Yeah. Nice to meet you, you don't have to even like me. You can buy me. love when people clap along, you know? Cause I'm here just like dancing by myself and I like, just trying to vibe. And you were vibing with me, so thank you. <laughs> love you. <laughs> All right, what's this next song? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. This is my first time playing this live. Yeah. This one's called Belong With You. Um, and I just released it. Oh God, November 11th or something like that? So I hope you guys like it. Let's do it. I'm no better, so be brighter than how I'm at. Just reacting to the weather I hit my target Both in hiding How to undo my own go-tos What you had me do I need your affection To feel the connection Learn my language All you have to do don't ask for perfection All I know is I've been in love with you Oh, 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 o
spending savings on planes, falling faster than rain, waking up to good vibes and months in vain. Sometimes I bait and you buy. I got so much fire, black stumbling through me, set things right. Solo though, Josh. I'll see you. <laughs> Thank you. So this last song that we're gonna play for you. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thanks for being sad about that. And this last song is a song I also wrote in the pandemic. You know, it's been a while. That lasted a really long time. Um, but it was really about fantasizing about living on the islands. <laughs> you know, the first time um, I ever left the country, I ever got on a plane, I went to go visit my brothers living in Manila. And on that plane, I remember getting some literature out of the seat in front of me and like these beautiful white sand beaches and it says Mabuhay on top of it. And I was like, paradise. <laughs> my family's from a place that's literally paradise. And um, What's funny is I haven't even been to this city. That's the title of the song I'm about to sing for you. <laughs> but it's like all these years, you know, I was just in Manila. I've only ever been to like Makati and Perenaque. And um, I've never been to, you know, Palawan. And, but for me, that was always something that was like, eventually in the future, I'll get there, but it's like a dream. And you know, I had always heard these stories from my mom and my siblings who immigrated here, how hard life was for them in the Philippines and why they came to the States to look for new opportunities and to start a new life here. But there's so much resilience and joy and humor in that community. And, and I really felt that when I was back there. And so this song for me is, and I hope for you, a little bit of that dream that the Philippines is the place to be. You know what I mean? It's something to, to dream about and to cherish and to hopefully be a part of like the mainstream narrative. 
that it's the place to be. This is Puerto Princesa. Somebody see somewhere in Puerto. We just want a visa for the flight. Hey, yo, fixing up a drink and the alcohol. Or my body's still waiting in a silk road. I just want a tree, I swear it don't snow. Somewhere in the tropics, I'll be riding on window. Paying all the bills in his side, oh. While I'm loving on my man in the bridle. No sun, no eye. Move a bit closer, one skin no mine. No plan, no time. I just want to swim in those deep sea eyes. I just want to be so full of Fixing up a drink in the alcove When my body's still writing in the circle I just want a tree, I'm swearing for a show Somewhere in the shop, it's probably right in the window Thinking of the biggest in your side, oh When I'm living in my mind, in my mind I just want to watch him cooking breakfast at 11 Rubbing in my sun cream, feel like heaven Watching all the stock rise through the ceiling Make sure all my day ones know the feeling, yeah Renting out the top floor of a hotel Acting like a mermaid wearing nothing but a seashell Waking up to Robin, singing in the villa Working on my tan line, sipping some tequila More sun, more wine Move a bit closer, won't skin no mine No plan, no time I just wanna swim in those deep sea eyes. I just wanna push up for the fly. Pushing up a drink in the alcohol. When my body's still away in the sugar. I just wanna come and try to get you. Somewhere in the child is happy riding no window. Chilling by the sea somewhere in Puerto. Chilling by the sea somewhere in Puerto While well, my body's still waiting in a silk road Chilling by the sea somewhere in Puerto Hey, I just wanna push up for the fly Fixing up a drink in the alcove While well, my body's still waiting in a silk road I just wanna treat us with a dumb song Somewhere in the shop, it's probably riding on the window Fixing up a drink in the alcove While well, my body's still waiting in a silk road I just wanna treat us with a dumb song Well, I'm living on my man in the garden that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. If, uh, if you want to hear the new stuff that's coming out, or you want to hear the old stuff, you can find me on any streaming platform. That's WIDA, O-U-I-D-A. And I'm on Instagram, SF Duchess, because you know, I grew up here. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me play tonight. Thank you, KQED and Bly Creative. Love y'all. Thank you. And I got a show on the 16th for my EP that's coming out. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Get up it up for Weta, y'all. Give it up for Wida, y'all. Thank Thanks, y'all. How y'all doing? All right. We're going to take a quick intermission. Uh, this is an invitation for you to go and get a drink, because I see some of y'all holding back in your seats. <laughs> I, s I see y'all holding back a little bit. Um, and I know y'all want to dance, so... Before we get to our last three artists of the night, please uh, take some time, 10 minutes, and I'll meet you right back here. And channel your inner Tita because we're gonna dance, okay? We're gonna dance, all right.
everyone. Pinsan. I'm back. I am her pinsan. If y'all can return to your seats, we'd really appreciate it. We'll round out this last half of Philippinex Arts Night at KQED with Balai Creative. He got his drink and it's done. <laughs> All right. Y'all can settle down. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I am really excited to um, share this second half of Philippinex Arts Night with you all. How are we doing? Are y'all having fun? Are you guys having a good time? Okay. Okay. I want the energy to like keep coming for like the second half, you know? I know it rained today, but like bring it, okay? I want y'all to bring it. Our next performer tonight is Kim Requesto. Yeah, shout out to Kim. Kim is a Philippine-born, Mission District-raised cultural practitioner and multidisciplinary artist based in San Francisco. Kim's artistic foundation is Philippine folk dance. But this is another sister with the range, OK? Uh, Kim also specializes in photography and filmmaking. Kim has dedicated herself to cultural expression and advocacy through movement, photography, and community outreach. She navigates her artistic work with the goal of fostering tangible supports for Pilipinexes abroad and indigenous communities in the Philippines. Requesto uh, conducts extensive field research to get a stronger understanding of the regional cultures and livelihoods. Requesto as aspires to create more contemporary Philippine diasporic dance work and visual media using her background in the Philippine dance to bring awareness and thoughtfulness to the realities of different communities in the Philippines and in the diaspora. At the heart of Kim's work is the mantra, advocacy through art. So without further ado, Kim Requesto. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Requesto. I was born in the Philippines, raised in the Mission District. And so KQED programming was such a big part of my childhood. And I'm so honored to be able to share Philippine dance and music with you all tonight. Um, so I have three musicians and dear friends of mine. We have Jan Luce on the Dabakan. <laughs> we have Jacob Alve Dominguez on the Agong. And we have Matthew Espina Harris on the Kulintan. They will be sharing two melodies today, a titik kalagan and titik tungkil, while I accompany them in dance. Um, you'll be seeing two iterations of pangalay, so a pangalay that was choreographed for the stage, and a pangalay freestyle, which we'll be seeing how that goes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. And without further ado, let's get it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's give it up for Jan Muse, Matthew Spina Harris, and Jacob Walde Dominguez. And I would like to also invite um, Nick Bo back to the stage. So Nick Bo will be um, singing Da Hill Sayo. Wow. <laughs> while I accompany her <laughs> in Bangalai. And so this is where we take it a little bit diasporic, a little bit contemporary, and also really excited to share the stage with you, Nick Bell. Let's give it up again for Kim Requesto, <laughs> Nick Bo, and Kim's the musicians. Y'all didn't know you were gonna cry tonight, did you? That song reminds me of my Lola. R.I.P. Lola. I know she's here. Just like Erica said, Nick Bo, she called in our ancestors at that first song, right? Like, they're all here, smiling, vibing, chiss missing. <laughs> and you know, this night wouldn't be the night it is without some main people from Belay Creative that I want to just shout out to and give flowers to, which is Desi and Gina, who are here tonight. They are the founders of Balai Creative, along with Kim Archetta, the first program manager. Come on, Gina, stand up. I wouldn't have a job without these folks. <laughs> so I wanted to just show some appreciation for them because when KQED approached me six months ago and they said, we really want to do a Filipino American, Philippine X artist night. Can you help us? I said, can I help you? <laughs> Have you heard of Balai Creative? Have you seen the talent and the artistry and the beautiful just energy of our grantees? And now the world has, right? This live stream is going to be living on KQED's YouTube page forever. 
Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank Marky, who also put this on and brought us in to the show to help produce and curate this space. So thank you guys. Now, I had to bring this card up because the next performer is a very special person. And if I didn't get this exactly right, she said she was going through follow me. <laughs> so the next performer tonight is not only a poet, but she has 25 years of dancing as a sambista performing at every major venue in Northern California doing samba, Brazilian samba, including several with Carlos Santana. <laughs> and after retiring from dancing and her career in the public sector, and with her daughter's urging, she finally went back to creative writing. Luna Saliver shared her politically fire poetry throughout California's college circuit over 45 years ago. She once opened for Sheila E. at SF State. <laughs> And in 2020, when Liwana book number three by Curdy Shoot Workshop and Soma Filipinas was asking for submissions, she submitted this poem, 2020, 1970, and 1920. And then she followed up in 2021 with The Masterpiece, a short film for Binnelsu Studio. And of course, her biggest piece of art is standing here on stage because I'm introducing my mother, Luna Saliver, with 2020, 1970, and 1920. While traversing the trails of Bernal Heights Hill, I heard the heartbeat of my San Francisco youth. Somewhere in the mission below this summit, <laughs> underneath 2020 smoke-filled skies, a seasoned conguero was slapping the skin of his, her, their drum in the rhythmic phrases that expand and contract of Wawanko. That earthy rhythm brings me back to days long lived in my city, long loved. 1970, Wamako could be heard on the bleachers of Aquatic Cove, to the benches of Dolores Park South, to the concrete steps of Ocean Beach where brown-skinned youth of every hue, descendants from every colonized country came to drum, to dance, to listen, to learn. We embraced self-determination as we ripped away the tethers of assimilation. No COVID-19 to lock us down or lightning ignited fires to smoke us out. And the only brighter blaze was the passion in our hearts. The best days in San Francisco was well before the gentrification by rootless, green-addicted hipsters. <laughs> the golden age of San Francisco was when it was a brilliant beacon even brighter than the glow that attracted our manangs 50 years before. Salamapo, 1920. Heads bowed to the manangs who pioneered Manila Town. Their heartbeat was a harmony of billiard balls colliding, the hiss of pork frying, the cadence of dialects from home reverberating against the walls of the I Hotel. Restricted, excluded, segregated, opportunities were beyond Manang's outreached fingertips. For them, success was a lifetime away, not theirs, but ours, for their sacrifices evolved into our successes, enabling boomers like me and generations like you to prosper and thrive in the golden age of San Francisco. Now, the only echoic memory louder than the Wawanko heartbeat of my San Francisco youth is a salamatpo gratitude resonating in my soul. Thank you. And when I say thank you, it's, it's more than just to signal the end of my poem, but to thank you for showing up, for coming out, and making KQED live history tonight. And I want to thank 
Bala Creative and Erica and the whole KQED Live uh, crew for making this happen. And you all are creators too. Thank you. Thank you, Luna Salivar. That was beautiful. <laughs> Y'all want more, huh? Well, we're nearing the end here. Um, and this is our last performance of the night, which this is where I want to see y'all's energy. This is where I want to see it. I know I knew y'all are all waiting for this. Our final performer of the night is a rapper and spoken word artist from the Bay Area, California, who released her debut album, Circa 91, at the end of 2017 and has since toured the United States, the Philippines, including universities, empowerment conferences, music venues, and spaces such as the National Mall in DC, the Getty Center, and the D. Young Museum. She's been featured on NPR, Huffington Post, Paper Mag, BuzzFeed, Triple X, Double X Magazine, New York Times. <laughs> My bad, my fault. It's the end of the night, you know? It's the end of the night. It's that chamomile tea. Here we go, here we go. New York Times, LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle, and in a Grammys, MasterCard, TV commercial, and Billboard campaign with R&B singer SZA. Yep. In 2022, she was featured in additional billboard campaigns by Amazon Music and Spotify, and she is currently a songwriter for, for Fox Network's hit TV show, The Cleaning Lady. Her song, Us, is currently featured in the widely popular video game, NBA 2K23. Yay. Hey. <laughs> and... <laughs> Her music is available on all digital platforms and could be heard in several museum exhibits, films, and television features. <laughs> Give her her flowers, yep. Now let me see all the island women rise. For Miss Ruby Ibarra. Yeah. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Erica. I hope y'all caught my, my new feature on uh, Triple X Magazine. I wasn't aware of it either. That's why I wore a sweater today. <laughs> Gotta switch it up sometime. <laughs> Bastos. Please, um, before we start our set, please give a big round of applause to everybody that performed tonight, please. I just wanna say it's so beautiful, especially when I get to be part of beautiful spaces like this, where we get to highlight and celebrate not only our culture and our identity, but the talents also within our community, especially when it's a lineup full of Penais. Again, please give a round of applause to everyone that graced the stage tonight. It's such an honor for us to, to be also part of this lineup. And for me, um, thank you so much to KQED. ED. Big shout out to Sarah Rose. Big shout out to Lance for, and of course, Marky for making this event happen. Um, as I'll be talking later on in the set, you know, this is um, sort of a nostalgic feeling for me to, to be here in this space for KQED because KQED for me has definitely been um, a part of my life, especially in the beginnings of my life of, you know, being an immigrant here in the U.S. And thank you so much for having us. Hope you all enjoy your set.
Can we get a little bit of the guitar, please? So today we have uh, Van on the lead guitar, a.k.a. Vael. We have Mikey on the bass. And we have Mike on the acoustic guitar as well. I know y'all. some of y'all are probably used to seeing me with a larger setup, a larger band. Um, this is a more um, smaller group of the Balik Bayans. Um, but I hope y'all enjoy this more acoustic version of our set. I think our guitar is still not. Um, can we get some someone from the tech team to possibly? Are y'all hearing that? Come on, the speakers. So I think while we're working on the music, um, we're gonna have Erica join us back on stage and um, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, KQED and of course, um, the music that y'all are about to hear today. Well, I wanted to do, uh, ask Ruby a couple of questions about her music because, um, you know, Ruby, you've done so much to put Penais on the map in the last couple of years. Um, what we're about to hear, once we do hear it, is music with a lot of storytelling. And you know, we're here at KQED after all, we're a news organization. And I wanna ask you, I feel like musicians and artists sort of have the same job as journalists, being storytellers, stenographers of the times that we're living in. What similarities do you see between the do like documentation and journalism and your role as a musician? I definitely see the intersections between you know, music and what journalists you know, are doing, especially in, in times like this right now. Um, as y'all will hear later on in the set, um, one of the songs that we've, we're going to be performing is a song called A Thousand Cuts. Um, I know my friend Evelyn Obamos is in the crowd tonight. Uh, she co-directed this uh, film called 7,000 Miles Homecoming, which features me and the Balik Bayans. And um, one very important segment of that film to me was when we visited the Rappler Studios um, back in uh, 2019. And for me, when we met, spe especially Maria Ressa um, during that trip, you know, it was just kind of a reminder and kind of actually one of the first times where I I thought about the, the question that you just asked and how we as musicians are essentially journalists. Um, one of the quotes that I always remembered is this you know, quote from Nina Simone about an artist's duty. And an artist's duty is to be an artist that reflects the times. And for me, I feel like I would be not only doing myself a disservice, but also my community a disservice if I didn't reflect my experiences, if I didn't reflect the experiences of my community. Um, because I know for me growing up, you know, outside of the films that I was reading and the books that I was, um, or the films that I was watching and the books that I was reading, that it was really the music and the musicians and rappers like Tupac and rappers like Lauryn Hill that were truly my teachers that served as, you know, teachers who taught me about the world and how to navigate the world, especially being a person of color. And so for me as an artist now, as an adult, and I think about my responsibility as an artist and you know, getting on, onto a microphone and getting on these stages, um, it's not lost on me that 
whatever I say into this microphone has impact, that the youth are, are listening to, to the words that are being said in the music. And it's also not lost on me that we're in such um, critical times right now, as we've all seen you know, in the past two years, especially being in the pandemic and um, everything that's been going on in our community with police brutality and um, anti-Asian hate. Um, and I think that it's definitely my responsibility, especially if I have a platform, to speak on those issues and to make sure that we have conversations and dialogues around those things that are happening. Because what's happening in the real world um, should always you know, be reflected in the arts because that is the most accessible form of knowledge being spread and knowledge to be also consumed, especially by the youth. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, amen to that. Um, you mentioned uh, Maria Reza and Rappler, which for those who don't know, uh, Maria Reza is a award-winning Penai journalist doing critical work covering the war on drugs in the Philippines and shining a light on what is happening in the homeland despite uh, the dangers of doing that in that in the Philippines right now. And I actually want to ask you about the homeland because, uh, as you were just mentioning, you speak a lot in your music to what is happening here in the States, but you also do a lot of work outside of your music to bring attention to what's happening there. Um, what role do you think we all in this room have to play in the diaspora in really connecting and being aware of what is happening in the homeland? That's a very important question, and I'm glad that you asked that. And it's actually been something that I've been thinking about heavily, again, especially in the last two years, um, especially knowing you know, um, that a lot of our counterparts in the Philippines right now don't have you know, the same freedoms that we do, especially when it comes to speaking out um, on things, injustices that are happening, um, things that are actually affecting our communities. And I know for me, as Ruby Ybarra, the person, like outside of the artist, there were so many times, especially um, again in the last two years, where of course I naturally felt afraid to speak out because of the consequences it might have, not on just myself, but on my family, especially because my mom lives in the Philippines. And after thinking about it, you know, more concretely, I came to a realization that at the end of the day, my responsibility as a Filipino American is to make sure that. I'm the bridge that I'm vocal and I'm advocating for, for our Filipinos and our Kababayans back home in the Philippines, especially in times where it's dangerous to speak out. And I have the liberties and I have the privilege to be able to speak out, to even get on a sta stage and you know talk about what's happening. Again, I'm aware that um, a lot of our counterparts in the Philippines don't have those very same freedoms. And so for me, again, it gives me you know a sense of responsibility in, in recognizing that um, it's more important to speak out than ever. And of course, you know, it's, it's going to vary per person. And we all, um, I, I would say, have, you know, varying knowledge on what, what's going on, on the issues that are happening. I would, I would probably just say to first and foremost that it's important to educate ourselves, um, you know, um, re read about what's going on, um, have that, those important critical conversations with, the, with folks in our community and really understand, you know, like how, what everything that's impacting um, the folks back home be around Philippine politics and um, social injustices right now. And when it comes to speaking out, I know that we all have varying degrees of um, not only freedoms, but also senses of like, comfort and you know the degree of um, how much we're able to do so. And um, so at the end of the day, I feel like it's more important to educate ourselves and the people who do have a platform to you know take it on yourself to, to speak out. Thank you for that. And Ruby, you don't just do music. Uh, I actually know you recently transitioned from your full-time job as a scientist to do music full-time, which is amazing. Um, as we look to the future of Philippinex art, uh, what advice do you have for the next generation of Filipino artists here in the Bay Area? When I look into the audience right now and I see a lot of the audience members are, you know, part of the youth, um, please, you know, listen when I say just make your art, do your art, speak your voice, tell your story. Um, that, that really is, you know, 
I know it sounds as, as simple, it sounds very simple, but it's not actually as simple doing the action. Um, I know for me, it took me a long time to, to find that confidence within myself to use my voice. Um, growing up as, as a young um, Filipina American, I was completely like the most shy kid in class. Like even if I knew the answer, I wouldn't raise my hand in class. And I think, you know, looking back at it now, it was because I obviously, um, you know, I didn't have that confidence. And I think a lot of that stemmed from, you know, that kind of colonial mindset of, you know, thinking that I don't have the a, a voice that matters or I don't have a story that matters when in fact it's the complete opposite. And so especially with the, the next generation of artists, and I'm seeing an abundance of them, by the way, a lot of amazing artists in our community. Shout out to folks like Bettina. Shout out to folks like Amihan. Shout out to folks like Presley. Shout out to folks like Miles. Um, incredible young talent that's on the come up. And I think you know we're in such a great moment right now to celebrate that there's um, a next generation of artists that are putting out their stories. And I think for us older folks, we got to support them. Um, make sure that we continue to amplify their work and um, we continue to hold that door open for the next generation. Hell yeah, that's powerful. Thank you, Ruby. Well, without further ado, our last performer of the night, Ruby Barra. Thank you, Erica. Cause I want my life to change Tired of being short change I'm trying to remain sane Hopped off the plane Didn't stop all the pain My father's still in debt And we've been struggling to pay For a bedroom of a Meeklin app Reach a foot just meet in half Hands tied against the odds How you gonna even that? People from the slums Once not living the humdrum Mama from the bar You so we dream And we can stunt runs Mama Know it's gonna be fine wherever we go Cause we know you raise this goal to dream and be a hero What's an ego to an eagle? I free flow when I speak though My pipe dreams throw people My skin's so Filipino Oftentimes my pride is satisfied in hot tides Then we broke the ocean Was today you learn a no stop Closed eyes, fingerprint ink With the most die Those times mama never blink Say the oath twice I said mama we gon' make it there someday I said mama Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it here. 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 What's a freestyle? Tell me I've been doing this a six year old. Thinking on my own two feet. Survival, pick and go, pick a roll. You can be the swimmer or a sunken soul. I was a six year old without a father figure roll. No silver spoon to dinner rolls. So will you fold or will you go? Pretend to sing like Figaro. My people still invisible. When you the spitting image of a person that you hate. Make sense of spitting images of dawn that never breaks. Nirvana never waits. So was a pawn a bitter fate. The spawn from inner hate, I never wanted to be great. I study my mother, wonder how she holds this family. The minimum salary stretch as much as it can be. Stress but keeps the shit from me. I'm just trying to fit and see a great for that acceptance. That can validate my sanity. I wrestle with affirmations, settle for masks and faces. After all, the stolen lands are always greener places. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it here. 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 
At school reduced lunches when my mama skip her lunch time. Nine to five, minimum wage. She got the bus line. Here I am, filling the page, waiting the bus rhymes. Till I'm near in the day, I'm getting co-signed. Snare rolls and punch lines, the pig rolls and punch time. Take shows like crunch time. Break those like front line. Life on these lines, cause we never had lifelines. So these days, I'm scared of what might go through my mind. Flow like Rizal and I'm rotting like Hagador. Mixed with lawn, my baller no watches the page worn. Say my name, it's taste born. Time to make your face for me ways you never made. Born from another place, thorns couldn't break away. I made just a breakaway. Being center stage off the page, will I fade away? Never been the type to say, scared of what I have to face. All I ever knew was being me, so all I ever need to say is, I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday. I said, Mama, we gon' make it there someday i said mama we gonna make it there someday i said mama we gonna make it there someday i said mama we gonna make it here someday i said mama we gonna make it here someday i said mama we gonna make it here someday i said mama yeah we made it here today thank y'all so much And as I mentioned earlier, um, this is so special for us to be part of the show put on by KQED. I know when I first got here to America with my family back in the 90s, um, I remember we the first spot that we lived at was in Hayward, California. And um, Haystack 5 and no. Um, and for me, I remember when we stepped into my dad's apartment, because my dad lived here in the US before me, my mom, and my baby sister. Um, he had this, one of those old school, like, television boxes with the big antennas, and I think, like, the frame of the, the television was made of wood, and the antennas also had, like, foil wrapped around it. Like, it was super old school, but we got, we got, you know, we got our channels, and one of those channels happened to be KQED, and also had PBS programming, and for me, growing up as a five-year-old, um, I remember I would watch shows like Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, over and over again, and eventually Arthur. Shout out to the Arthur fans out there. Um, and for me, it was that kind of programming that really, you know, taught me about American culture. And it was also my way, you know, to learn the English language. Um, coming here in, in this country and coming from a place like Tacloban City, Philippines, where all I saw around me previously had only been Filipinos. We only ate Filipino food. Um, I only knew how to speak Warai. And for me to, to hear English and to learn about American culture through these programming, and I'm sure you know that's the case for a lot of immigrant folks, is learning the culture and the language through television. And that's what KQED did for me. Um, it allowed me to um, find a way to assimilate, especially in the times when assimilation was a way of survival, as a way to protect myself and my family. and. And, you know, I'll never forget, you know, those early days where I would wake up in the morning before school and watch Sesame Street and go through, you know, with Elmo and Big Bird and learn the letters and the alphabet and eventually learn my sentences and learn how to read. And to me, as you all know, through music and through words, that's my kind of, you know, superpower. That's the way I learned to protect myself and in a way also to share my culture and where I come from. Put me on the 
fibers. Color of the lines, cause I color like your iris. Hunger in my eyes, this is everything that iris. Kill it with my tongue, when I spit it with the free. I believe I'll never leave, hey, cause I'm finally here. So get your hands in the air. Talk less and take notes. We slay sheep. Respect those who praise deep for next toe. The this the flex, throw finesse. These to bless those. See free, say test, don't we say peace, but stay woke. Leave you cats face to the point I catch praise. Rhyme certain to catch phrase. The list starts a cascade. Product the Mac Dre, Wu Tang and Andre. Break beats on beat tapes and break next we press play. They say we from the slums where the heroes never run. My people always sung round faces in the sun. Still was sitting with my tongue. After spinning from the station, I'm rotating around the sun. The act this is my mattress, I pass out, pass this, abstract the masses, last up the practice, back to back raps, Manila Noir, bar for bar, homie, check the repertoire, bar with the bars that's up, bar, one less up the bar, cause I'm finally here, hey, 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 hey. so get your hands in the air, hey, 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 hey. cause now the greatest is here. so much. Please give it up for Mike Belasco on the guitar. For my birthday, it's beautiful outside. Watching the sun rise, barely open in an eye. When the orange meets the yellow, and the sun seeks to dwell low. I hit you with a ruby, nice to meet you in the hello. While I dream about the days I've been eastern late to lately. Raising San Lorenzo, but the global city laid me. Mama, mama gave, mama, mama gave. Yeah, cause it's the realness. Uh, three days before my birthday, it's beautiful outside. Watching the sun rise, barely open in an eye. When the realness. It's the realness, yeah, it's the realness, it's the realness. So I hit him with the realness one time, one, two. I hit him with the realness one time, one, two. Gotta hit him with the realness one time, one, two. Come look into my eyes, I got a bird's eye view. I hit him with the realness one time, one, two. I hit him with the realness one time, one, two. Gotta hit him with the realness one time, one, two. Come look into my eyes, I got a bird's eye view. Sun 
go down do you feel that moon i was at seen in the dark that no one thought would bloom the place is that i'm from people gone too soon so like a fly on the wall i try to gauge my room like what you wake up for when the dawn breaks when everything's a stick how you work with the mind state you wish for a clean slate i'd rather have a full rate of drum breaks and heart breaks my one plate can bear weight that might make you less of the enemy we feed off the energy and evil for mc i eat you get all of me full stream of fool's gold i won't be a fool so try me in the pool of atomic 79 and you can you remind how gold the ruby be divine if the purpose is to shine i'd rather brighten up this mind there's a picture bigger than this mc's is better than me we talk about the realest then it better be me hey hit him with the realest one time one two i hit him with the realest one time one two gotta hit him with the realest one time one two come look into my eyes i got a bird's eye view when i hit him with the realest one time one two hit him with the realest one time one two gotta hit him with the realest one time one two come look into my eyes i got a bird's eye view And I become half beast, half girl with a sword for a tongue. Oddly be in the sky, take my prey into somebody. You gotta drop it, a rocket, and top is more than a hobby. But ain't no deal for I like a top though, she need got me. My rocks are death notes, so many beats, I got a body. I'm a mad villain. I relapse and do miles, y'all do mother. Can't master you styles, beast, idiom. Some sending them to idiots and simple things. Don't pity them. I sentence them opinions. The pen of we role models so the stage like runways. We try to run away to one way the sun's rays and focus on our daughters and the way our sons raised uh, ruby yabara i'ma make it someday yeah ruby yabara i'ma make it one way uh ruby yabara i'ma make it some Please give it up to these amazing musicians on stage tonight. And let's please continue to support, especially young Filipino Americans in the arts. We gotta make sure we support, you know, the youth in the arts. Since the vibe in my vibrato, love the skin I'm in, but I know that's the reason that my father will be shining down the bottle. Mama, I'm trying to make it, but the odds against me. These people say to fake it, but my selling points me. Pray for me, don't praise me. I got too many inner demons to constantly down, always try to break me. They wonder why you hate me. I don't see myself in places of power, but I've been thinking like it lately. I'm feeling like I'm eight feet with two tongues, my words are aiming like the guns that they point at Kuya's face see I think can you paint me is what my youngest sister saying cause we never seen her face up on that TV that's nothing like me until I don't like me I mean is it likely so I I just write me in these poems nightly which means I just fight me between songs that might be I seen from my life see I see my head above the water how will I raise a daughter when the currency don't offer same piece or two a dollar I'm the daughter of two 
two immigrants been working that blue collar. They say they never talk unless they dream across the water. The background, background. But when I'm down, it go background, background. I never been the type to back down, back down. I bounce back and I'm back now, back now. I never been the type to I don't know why. Sometimes I feel blind. They say you're gone all the time. But trust, it weighs on my mind. Cause maybe all I know is I'll make it this time. You see, I do this for mine. So trust, I'll make it this time. Cause maybe all I know is an all. stretch for every line that I might etch. Thinking about the next rhyme like I can mind sign yet. My dreams are far-fetched. I'm feeling like this is the last stretch. Running through that finish line. Been running from my past yet. Bear with me the way to my magnum opus debut. My check first gig is day two. We live, we never take two. Swimming the high tides. We swallowing our pride. We buy into their lies. I'm silent with my cries. We trying to cut ties. A citizen part-time. She holding the nine five. He holding the nine five times he couldn't swallow pride so we called it the pot now my father he don't cry he talk about it don't try the music flowing deeper than the flat nose and skin tones sharpest of the accents but we at home in these poems thicker than the fuse in the manila sky broken dreams and severed ties came here when we broke the sky check it i'm the food for thought heavyweight make the lettuce levitate trying to be one of the greats trust me time will tell my fate so tell me ruby tell me why the hell you still afraid your only enemy is you and that's from yesterday the background background but when i'm down it go background background i never been the type to back down back down i bounce back and i'm back now back now i never been the type to i don't know why sometimes i feel blind they say you're gone all the time but trust it weighs on my mind cause maybe Maybe all I know is, and all I know is, all I know is, and all I know is, all I know is, and all I know is, all I know is, and all I know is. stroke a technique masterfully taught to be by my colonizers. The skin is brown as my father's hands and as deep as the lines over my mother's eyes. Nose and skin, eyes and smile, name and accent. Indicators where I came from past the Pacific Ocean where the air is a bit more tight and the sun's rays a bit more strong. I imagine the distant days when you bathed in the rain, the water naturally warm as it fell on my skin. I will look down into the reflection in the puddles that would form beneath my feet. Distorted, but perfectly clear. Brown body gleaming in the reflection. They say papaya soap only works when it burns and it burns deep. So scrub harder. When we played outside in hot days, the mothers would say we smell just like the sun. You don't want to be in the sun! They all say. We are taught to fear darkness, but ironically find solace in the shade. 
But the skin was built to change colors like chameleons. The skin was built to absorb the scent till it blooms. The skin that many spend their days hitting was built to reflect the stories of our ancestors. You don't want to be in the sun. Ruby, stay out of the sun. So scrub harder. Scrub harder. I looked out now. And this time, I see my color wash away with the water. Thank you all so much. For this next song, we have two songs for y'all left. Um, for this next track, I'd like to bring up two special, two very special guests up on stage. Um, this next, earlier we, we were having this conversation with Erica about what the next generation of Filipino American arts and Filipino American music looks like. And to me, it looks like this. So to give you all a little bit of a background of how I met these two incredible musicians, um, I, I got married last year. <laughs> Shout out to my husband. Um, and I met Paulo because he's one of the co-owners of TNT Tricycle. Um, and we had that at the wedding. And for me, it was so special for Paulo to, to be able to bring, you know, the, the trike at the wedding. Because for me, it's one of the modes of transportation that is iconic and, of course, part of Filipino American, or Filipino culture. And to have that at the wedding was incredible. And I felt like I was back home in the Philippines. And I felt connected to my mom, who was, you know, back in the Philippines during my wedding. And I met, of course, Presley, his daughter. Um, <laughs> And I found out that she's 11 years old and is such a talented musician. Thank you. Who wrote the song that we're about to perform, who plays the bass, and is just an incredible songwriter and musician. And this next track is called Whole, written by Presley. Thank you. <laughs> Drifted apart Cause you were never there To help me I see you laughing At my tears Think I put up with that For all these years I see the stains That you left in my brain Cause you were always there To hurt me
to you I love me don't like you this is goodbye to goodbye you. to uh, you I love me don't like you this is goodbye to you <laughs> so much Ruby for like letting me join this it's such an honor to be like up here with you give it up y'all I told y'all there's so much upcoming amazing talent in the community we got to support them we gotta make sure that we put them up on stages and we amplify their voices and their music, y'all. So this last track that I'd like to share I thought was very fitting. Um, this song is the title track to this amazing docu-film called A Thousand Cuts, um, directed by Ramona Diaz featuring Maria Ressa. And again, for me, um, as a musician, um, you know, it's important for me to, to be an artist, to, to reflect the times. And I feel like the, that film also did the same way in, in reflecting what's going on in the Philippines right now. And um, can, we, can we get the, the bass guitar up a little bit? Up. Even when I lose it all, I always got my eyes up. They praying on my downfall, but I'll never give up. A thousand cuts won't be enough to keep my fists in these cuffs. And I'm never breaking down when the odds against me. Brown gold, gold crown with the gods within me, yeah. I was the flower that bloomed in the dark room. Flows like monsoons from the womb when I write. Move runes and resume, I grew to lie soon. Prayed to many moons and my wounds would not bloom. Where we from? Death looms, so we hum you these tunes. And hope is sparks like like a night in mid-june my heart's consumed by hate here it's harder when you live fear how can you see clear when you don't see you in the mirror uh i lost so many peers they seem to disappear but they living through these words that i'm painting here tell me you'll remember me i'm here to build a legacy i got the ground moving under me a thousand cuts ain't never stopping me and i swear i'm never giving up who I am or why I'm standing up And I ain't ever need no ounce of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts I can live a thousand cuts Then live a life just covering up what would you die for? What do you live for? When it's resistance, met with an uproar. I'm trying to love more. We've had enough war. Too many stones in our hands and these guns drawn. They try to pressure me, press me till I stumble down, but not this time. I go zero to 100 now. They'll never silence me and my voice will be denied. And I'm challenged in the system. No, it won't be televised and I'll never compromise. Cause I'm rotten to survive when the freedom ain't free. And so let's keep the hope alive. Yeah, I see it me from the flatters to my feelings from the martyrs to the artists and the writers making silence it's life on these lines with lines of front lines i test to these minds so we question these lines if i ever bite my tongue uh, that'll be the death uh, everything i stand for no but won't be any less and p.s tell me you remember me i'm here to build a legacy i got the ground moving under me a thousand cuts ain't never stopping me And I swear I'm never giving up Who I am or why I'm standing up And I ain't ever need no ounce of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts Yeah I can live a thousand cuts The live a life just covering up And I swear I'm never giving up who I am or why I'm standing up 
And I ain't ever need no ass of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts I can live a thousand cuts The level I've just covered up I stand up, break these walls, I rise up Even when I lose it all, I always got my eyes up They praying on my downfall, but I'll never give up A thousand cuts won't be enough to keep my fists in these cuffs Thank you all so much Please give it up for Mikey, Mike, and Vael Once again, my name is Ruby Yabara. Give it up for KQED Thank you, Ruby. Thank you. I actually, um, Ruby, can we actually have you come back up? I want to have all the artists, bring all the artists back up. Give it up for Ruby Ibarra, <laughs> Presley, Paolo, the Balik Bayons, Nick Bo, Gail Romasanta, Wida, Kim Requesto, Nicole. Come on, y'all. Come on up here. This is the future of Filipinx arts, y'all. This is it right here. I wanna, yeah, everyone come up. Kim Requesto, let's go. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> oh my God, look at all these beautiful faces. I wanna just end the night um, looking to the future because Filipinos are the future. Uh, Nicole, can you tell us a little bit about how to keep in touch and support Balai Creative and other Filipino artists that we see here tonight? Yeah, I just want to add to that. Like, we here on the stage are the future, but also all of you in the audience are part of that future. Everyone watching on the live stream and on YouTube later on, you are part of the future. My baby boy, six months old, AJ, watching from home, you're the future. And of course, we are not here without your love and support. So the call to action is come out and support other Philippine ex and Filipino American artists. Go to the shows, go to the screenings, go to the premieres and come and volunteer at Balai Creative <laughs> and apply for our, our grantee program. Half of these artists are our grantees. This could be you. So if something sparked within you, a seed is growing within you to create, just like Ruby said, create. You can be young. You could be a legacy artist like my mother. I ain't going to say old. I ain't going to say old. Like a fine wine. <laughs> apply. You know, we want to see all of you creating. Creation is beautiful, and it's just like everything here on this stage. So follow us on balaicreative.com.org and at our social media sites, Instagram, YouTube, all of the things. Thank you, KEBD. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you to all our beautiful artists. Have a great night. Get home safe. Mabuha, y'all. Thank you.